Well, welcome everybody to our virtual version of our fifth grade orientation night. This is just purely an informational meeting for everyone um, based on how we get students started uh, in sixth grade band from um, arranging their schedule prior to leaving their fifth grade year to obtaining an instrument and then just how we kick off the school year and how their schedule is built um, from semesters one and two, because it does differ a little bit. Uh, can everybody see on the screen my PowerPoint presentation with the slideshow? Yeah, okay, good. All right, uh, before we get started with all the abundant amount of information, I'm just gonna introduce uh, myself and Mr. B first. Uh, my name is Abby Markowitz, and I'm obviously one of the band directors at the middle school primarily, but I also work at the high school too. I am wrapping up year nine of teaching. I have both my bachelor's and master's degrees. Uh, but for me, primarily what I end up doing is I work with the vast majority of our Woodwind students. I can uh, work with, we both, Mr. B and I, we team teach uh, all of our, our bands at the middle school. Uh, and we have different concert bands at the high school. Uh, but for me, when it comes to teaching in small group lessons, so similar bass instrument lessons, I teach mostly all of the Woodwinds plus the trumpet. And Mr. B, you want to introduce yourself? Sure. My name is Chris Blininger. Uh, I'm the band director at the high school primarily, but also, uh, like Mrs. Markowitz said, we team teach uh, together throughout the day. So I spend most of my time at the middle school until the last period of the day. Uh, you can see on the slide there, this is my 24th year teaching, uh, 23 of those in Louisville. And you can see I got my bachelor's in music ed at Capitol down in Columbus and my master's degree from Kent State and uh, looking forward to getting some new, new newbies started here. Okay, um, this is probably the most confusing part of our presentation. I do have three slides and hopefully with every slide, uh, there will be more clarity gained as far as how the um, sixth grade band schedule functions at the middle school. So semester one is different from semester two in that band, it takes up both what we call co-academic class periods. Co-academic is the new name for students uh, concerning their specials classes. So like right now, our fifth graders are all of our elementary students. They have library, art, gym, STEM or tech class, all those classes, music. Uh, we now call them at the middle school co-academic. And you get two co-academic blocks, one class period each for each block, and band will end up taking both of those class periods. The co-academics for sixth graders fall during class periods three and four. And what will happen is we teach through both of those classes. So when we start the school year, what will happen is the students won't actually play for both of those classes. We split everybody up into similar instrument groups. So all the flutes play together only, all the clarinets, trumpet, saxophone, trombone, and percussion, we all rehearse separately um, into separate groups. And if you look here on the slide, you will see, this is for example, the, the schedule that we operated with this year. Um, anybody who's in group one would be a flute player or a saxophone player, group two, clarinet, trombone, and group three students would be trumpet and percussion. And the group that would be rehearsing that day, for example, flutes would rehearse with me and saxophones would rehearse with Mr. B. So again, these groups don't actually rehearse together. Flutes and saxophones don't play together, but they are just within the same group. So when we rotate between their group lessons, one class period in a study hall, we do build in a study hall uh, for the sixth graders. Uh, we have like, for example, this type of class period shift. So for third period, anybody, oops, sorry. So for third period, anybody that would be in group one, for example, the flutes and saxophone players, they would practice in their group lesson with us. One group would rehearse in the auditorium. Another group rehearses in a separate space in the band suite. And then anybody that has been assigned to groups two and three, they actually go to the cafeteria for a study hall during that third period. And then once third period is over and the bell rings, we shift into fourth period. Groups one and two go to study hall. Oops. 
group two rehearses and then group one and three, I have a typo on here, uh, group two rehearses while groups one and three are in study hall. So you'll see that group three in the case of this day, they end up having two study halls and that will sometimes happen about once a week at the most for our students, but that's just kind of the, the cross we bear with only having you know two directors, but then all these separate um, sectionals. And to be frank, you know, it hasn't really been a huge burden for our students. You know, sixth grade is a huge change as we shift from elementary school scheduling to to the um, the middle school. And it's pretty fantastic that students that are enrolled in band have automatically a study hall um, given to them for the first half of the school year. It won't show up that way on their schedule when it's mailed to them or posted for them in Schoology or however else it is delivered from our guidance department to families. But you will see how band is listed for third and fourth period. And that is with the assumption that they also have like a study hall break in their day. Any questions so far? I know that was pretty confusing. And when we get into hopefully the, the full month calendar, it'll be a little bit easier to see. So far so good, okay. Um, so from semester one to semester two, we do eliminate what we call the band block. It shifts from being a two class period um, course to just one. So sixth graders only have band during class period three. At that point in time, in the second half of the school year, your sixth grade student is able to then select a separate co-academic to pursue um, from basically January through May. So that um, second co-academic would occur during fourth period, and that would either be STEM, gym, art, or study hall. And at that point, we resume full band rehearsals uh, where your student would have in the entire, in the end, in the auditorium, everybody in the band would be practicing together. Uh, but your, um, let's say your daughter or son elected to play saxophone. On Tuesdays, they would have their group lesson. Uh, and then every other day of the week, they'd be in full band. And then percussion students would have their group lesson on Wednesday. And then every other day would be full band. So we shift from this mentality of having that one section group lesson uh, multiple times throughout a week to they have one group lesson, but then they're in that full band rehearsal mode throughout the rest of the school year. So it's a great shift of independence as they advance on their instrument from semester one to semester two. And here's an example calendar for us. Uh, before I talk about band and choir, how that is an option for your student, you'll see on the uh, September calendar, this was the, the example calendar from this past September, uh, you'll see that in the top right hand corner of every date are two numbers, one, two, on September 2nd, on September 3rd, you have three, one, and so on and so forth. That's representing your student's group number. So you'll see, for example, on September 2nd, that Wednesday, group one would rehearse first during third period, and the group two students would rehearse in their group lesson during fourth period. And then the following day, we keep shifting down the line through the group lessons. Group three would start the day in their group lesson, while groups two and one are in study hall. And then for fourth period, group one has their group lesson, while groups two and three have their study hall. Before I talk about band and choir, are there any questions concerning the madness with uh, the rotating schedule for group lessons? Awesome. Uh, so the other co-academic I didn't talk about that is a choice for sixth, seventh and eighth graders is choir. Choir is the other music elective that we have at, at the middle school. And it is not a conflicting co-academic like it would be for all the other classes. Students that are enrolled in choir are also allowed to be shared students in band. So nobody has to pick with one or the other. What happens is the students that are in both classes, they just follow a rotating schedule like I have here um, in the September calendar. So one day they would have choir and then the following day they have band. And we just keep rotating like that throughout the entirety of the month. 
Um, Mrs. McFaney is our choir director at the middle school and high school, and her and I do an awesome job at communicating uh, our concerts and any other like very special or important events. So if there's a band concert coming up, we are more than happy to have you know, doubled up or stacked days for band rehearsals only. So that way our band students have a little bit extra time leading up to a performance and vice versa. For example, we have um, at, the, at the middle school, the, uh, the, the musical, uh, they're doing a schoolhouse rock and leading up to the, the musical here at the end of April, we have a lot of choir rehearsals in a row. So students feel very, very comfortable preparing for that performance. And I understand looking at this calendar, it looks really overwhelming. It is a lot of information, but I promise our sixth grade students learn it real fast. They understand it. They can grasp onto it better than any other adult in the school. They do a great job with it. And if there is any confusion, I always make sure at the beginning of every month, I post their calendars online to Schoology. So that way they can easily see it every day. Uh, there's calendars posted in the hallway in front of both the band and choir room. And I also have hard copies always available um, in the front of both rehearsal spaces. So when in doubt, they can always check their calendar and they know exactly what they're doing um, the following day or day of. And that's basically it for the most confusing part of the presentation. Any questions so far? What the letters, so B would be for band and C would be for choir. So like for the first week of September, if you're a choir student, uh, you would have choir. And then if you're still like that shared band and choir student, you would have band on Wednesday. Okay, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. That was a good question. I didn't say anything about what the letters meant, sorry. Okay, you're up. Okay, we do get uh, some questions from time to time about what does band uh, interfere with or what what other activities can my student uh, be involved with? And the answer is it really doesn't uh, conflict with much at all in the middle school. We're happy to, to offer band during the school day. Uh, the students have band right on their schedule and all of our practices and uh, and their rehearsals are all during the school day. So it's an actual class that'll show up on their schedule. Uh, there's nothing after school as far as rehearsals or practices. Um, the students um, do perform three times throughout the year. The first performance is sometime early in December. That's our winter concert. It's on a weeknight. Uh, then we do have uh, one Saturday that the students perform at our, at our band festival. That's our annual band festival that uh, that we uh, have usually at the uh, beginning part of April. And then our winter concert, or I'm sorry, our spring concert then is is in the, in the early part of May typically. And that's again, a weeknight concert. So there really aren't any uh, conflicts after school and just the one Saturday concert um, um, per year. So they're able to do all the, uh, the things that the middle school offers and, and still enjoy being in the band. Uh, because it's part of the school day. Uh, the other question sometimes we get, are the students graded in band? And, and they are uh, graded in band. You can see on the screen here how that grade is broken down into three sections. 30% uh, of their grade is based on those performances that I just mentioned. And then we have a 10% sort of homework grade where the students do log their practice time weekly. And they have weekly practice journals that are due typically on Mondays. That counts as a homework grade for us, and that's 10% of their nine weeks grade, as you can see. And then the remainder of the, um, of the grade per nine weeks is based on what we call sectional grades. And those are those small group lessons that Mrs. Markowitz mentioned, uh, where they'll have maybe an assignment, a weekly assignment. So if I'm, for example, working with the saxophones, uh, I'll give them an exercise out of the book uh, that we've been through, and, and they'll, be having, they'll have that due the following week. Uh, for a grade, and they'll play that for a grade. So that makes up the other part of their nine weeks grades. So that's how the grades are broken down. And the good thing about band is that those grades um, count just just like any other class into their grade point average. So, you know, the band grade is, is just as uh, important as weighted in terms of uh, weight, just like the math grade or the science grade or, or, or language arts. So typically the, the band grades 
uh, are high because the kids enjoy playing and they enjoy practicing once they get the, the hang of playing their instrument. And those grades can really, really help their uh, grade point average at the end of the nine weeks. Are there any questions about uh, other activities in band or how band is, is graded per nine weeks? Okay, um, next I'm going to introduce a representative from Pellegrino Music Center who we have invited their, their store to be a part of our meeting tonight. Uh, Pellegrino's has worked with Louisville Schools for many, many years and they do an, an amazing job of servicing our needs here at school. Uh, Mr. Davidson, who you're going to hear from next, comes out to Louisville uh, usually on Tuesdays once per week to uh, supply us with needs and to take repairs and do all the things that, that a good music store does. And he's going to talk a little bit about the instruments that your students can get started on and also uh, go through a, a little bit of their rental program that they offer. So, Mr. Davidson. Thank you. My name is Dale Davidson, and I am the store rep for Louisville Schools. Pellegrino's Music actually started their school, their store in Louisville over 50 years ago. Uh, we're currently located on the corner of Everhard and Fulton Road in Belton Village. Let me explain a little bit about our rental program now. We have a rent-to-own program where you rent the instrument on a month-to-month -month basis until you own the instrument. 100% of your payment goes towards the equity of your instrument. If you decide to purchase your instrument anytime with, while you're running the instrument, you receive a 25% discount on the unpaid balance. We also have a program where if, if this instrument doesn't work out for you with your director's permission, we can switch instruments and use the same equity towards another instrument while you're renting. Uh, if you decide later on you want to step up to a, a more professional horn, you can use the equity in your instrument to purchase a better instrument, maybe in late middle school, or early high school, and that's always a nice program. Uh, if at some point you find your own instrument and you want to return ours, all you have to do is return the instrument to me or to the store and your contract ends. You're in no obligation whatsoever to purchase the instrument. And that's one of the nice things about the rental program. We have three different types of instruments. We have brand new instruments right out of the box that have never been played before. We have nearly new instruments that have been rented a short amount of time, but are in very good condition. And then we have rental return instruments, which have been used uh, slightly longer and they probably show more blemishes. All of our instruments are recommended, uh, the recommended brands by your directors, and they've also been play tested by our repair tech. So every instrument we have and that we rent is actually in good condition as far as playing. We have an optional $5 maintenance fee that if you're interested, we would provide your child with an instrument loaner while your instrument is getting repaired. That way they don't miss any band time. We also have part of that cost takes place um, almost anything that happens to the instrument with the exception of fire, theft, or intentional damage. Uh, we have an optional starter pack that includes the care and maintenance kit for all of the instruments. We also have for clarinet and saxophone, your first box of reeds and your first music stand. And that is an optional price. It's a one-time fee. Uh, and if you have your own equipment, that's fine. But that is uh, at a discounted price with our rental program. Uh, percussionists, we would include a mallet bag. Uh, for all of the percussionists. Uh, in order to rent an instrument, we require two months down payment and you'll receive another month free. You can go to our website, pellegrinomusic.com and apply for the application. We would process everything online. We would bundle it, put your child's name on a starter pack and the instrument and deliver it to the school in August when the directors are ready to begin their uh, instruction. Um, you can come into the store. We can do it over the counter. That's, uh, that's just as easy. But uh, I know that the directors want to pass out all of the instruments at the same time so all the kids get the same kind of instruction uh, and, and how to put the instrument together. So if you have any questions, please feel free to call the store, and I'll stay online and answer any questions. Thank you.
Thank you, Dale. You're welcome. Uh, one other question that we sometimes get here looking at, at this next slide is what if I already own an instrument or maybe I had a son or a daughter or a family instrument that's, that's in the family. Can we use it? And you sure can. Uh, the rent to own program that Pellegrino's offers is excellent. Uh, most students take advantage of that. Um, and I can tell you that what he said is true that all the brands that, that they have are brands that we would recommend. Um, and they're not definitely not toys. They're quality instruments that, if taken care of uh, properly, are going to last your student throughout middle school and high school and even beyond in some cases. Um, but there are other brands out there that are quality as well. And if you find something or have something in the family uh, that you would like to use, that is absolutely not a problem. We would just suggest uh, that you give us a call so we can take a look at it. Or if you find a brand that you're just not sure about, uh, give us a call or an email and let us know, and we'll, we'll let you know if it's something that we would uh, that we would recommend, or or possibly something to stay away from. So it's it's totally um, up to you whether you have an instrument that you would like to use. Uh, just make sure you contact one of us so we can take a look at it to make sure that it's working correctly and give you some some guidance on anything that might need fixed at that point. Mrs. Markowitz. You're on mute, Mrs. Markowitz. Okay. Rookie mistake there. <laughs> it's been a while since I've had it to a Google Meet. Sorry, everybody. Um, so for the next slide for us, uh, we've kind of moved past a lot of this information. Uh, a few weeks ago, when we first started visiting the students at the elementary school, it was very important as we got to know them and started to learn their interests concerning you know, instruments that they were really initially excited about and gravitated towards. The first two forms were pretty important, but at this point in time, the only one I'm very concerned about is just form number three. This is the band contract uh, form that the guidance department, Ms. Bull and Ms. Puste and I uh, navigate in order to help build all of the sixth grade schedule. So not just for, this isn't just intended for students that are interested in band. This is something for everybody to fill out because this is one, what we use to just go ahead and include band or not on the student schedule for next school year. And it also informs us as directing um, staff of what um, student each instrument is going to play. This helps us learning about the balance of instrumentation within our uh, future ensemble. For example, we can see like, all right, we have like 10 kids signed up for clarinet, but only five are signed up for, for trumpet. So as we keep recruiting throughout the school year, if students are kind of, you know, you know, interested in flute, kind of interested in clarinet, kind of interested in trumpet, you know, we would push them to hopefully maybe try trumpet uh, just to help us, you know, balance out the, the numbers in our, in our ensemble. For the most part, I understand that, you know, there's a lot of confusion as far as like adding band to the schedule because guidance already visited with the elementary school, I think in like January or February uh, and talked to them about building their schedule for their sixth grade year. And immediately people were able to go ahead and add band or not include it on their schedule. Uh, but there've been a lot of cases where I've had families reach out and say, hey, my student's really interested in band after seeing um, me come visit their elementary school and talking about it, or even just becoming more informed throughout these meetings. Like, I think this is something we wanna give, um, give a go at for next school year. So it's not too late to go ahead and change the schedule from a no to a yes, or just to simply start off with saying yes. No matter what your answer is, is if you just go ahead and fill out that, that band contract form, it's listed as number three out of the series of three Google forms. Don't worry about the other two. As long as I get the band contract saying that you want your answer to be yes for the band schedule, the guidance department knows to default to that form and not just utilize whatever you and your student might have filled out at the beginning of 2021. And if you didn't include band, but you do want to change your mind, just don't hesitate at all to contact myself or our two guidance counselors. I have their information here at the bottom of the screen, and we will make sure that we make all the proper adjustments to 
build the schedule that your family wants for your student. Any questions? Okay, one more slide to go. Um, how do I start next school year with band? It's obviously a very daunting task. This is beyond the normal. You grab all of your new school supplies from you know the store. It's not just about you know buying a folder for band or pencil, glue sticks, whatever. It's a very specific thing that we know that families haven't really encountered before. Our biggest answer for you guys is don't worry about it. Uh, if you are all set with pursuing your instrument option, whether it be renting an instrument through Pellegrinos, like Mr. B said before, that is something we highly recommend for families to do. Or if it's just an instrument that you've already been able to obtain on your own, don't worry about the rest. Just make sure that you have a proper functioning instrument that it, you if you are using one that's family or uh, friend owned, just make sure to take it in over the summer to a music store to have maintained so it's ready to go for the school year. Everything else, no need to worry about what kind of books you need to buy. Do you need to buy reeds, sticks, swabs, tuning slide grease, or anything else? We will take care of all of that. For anybody that rents an instrument, uh, like Mr. David said, they come with starter packs if that's an option you want to purchase. So all that equipment that I just rattled off, that'll already be sent along with the instrument to the middle school at the beginning of the school year. Uh, but everything else, we will go through what your student has. We'll make a, a list of everything that everybody needs and we'll order that through Pellegrinos, have it delivered to the middle school. And you don't have to worry at all about getting proper brand names or other materials. We'll have that sent over to the school for your family. And all you need to do is just reimburse the band office. Very, very easy, super convenient. And that's actually something that we offer all school year long. We do run a school store, a school supply store specific for our band program. So if you need a box of reeds, valve oil, a brand new book, a new pair of sticks, we're able to get those supplies for you on a weekly basis through Pellegrinos. They just deliver it to the middle school and it's at the convenience for you guys as a family. And that's all we have for you. Any questions at all about anything that we've gone over or anything else that you just, just had burning in the back of your mind concerning band or sixth grade moving on for next school year. Okay, well, anything for uh, Mr. Davidson concerning instrument rentals or anything else? Because if not, then you are free to um, go about the rest of your evening. But if you have any instrument specific questions, you can feel free to stay on and ask. Um, I actually had one. I was changing my daughter whenever he said the website to order the instruments or whatever for that. Mm -hmm. Where would I go to order that or to order my son an instrument? That would be at PellegrinoMusic.com. And on there, it would have an online rental link. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, and I have that um, information provided in the presentation. Uh, and this slideshow is also duplicated on our band website. Uh, if you were to go to the, the sixth grade band tab, we have a, a link direct, directed, uh, directing you to Pellegrino Music Center, uh, their online site, as well as the rental information flyer. And if you were kind of bouncing between instruments with your student, there's a video to watch about each instrument. Any other Thank questions? You. No, that's oh, all. you're welcome. Okay. All right, everybody. Well, thank you so much for your time tonight. Uh, if you have any questions ever of the remainder of the school year, please don't hesitate to contact us. You can call us or reach out via email. Our information is provided again at the end of this presentation and also on our band website and through the, the, the staff directory on the uh, school website. So thank you again for joining. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Mm -hmm.